expected. Now, are we expecting them to as well vote for the PSR loss increase potentially? Where do you think uh, Eddie Howe and the board will lie going into that vote? They will definitely want the increase again. They're another club that's uh, getting close to the wind uh, in terms of the PSR requirements. But yes, they will be voting for the increase. Of course, their uh, their ownership would again be able to fund it should they need to. And I think part of the longer term plan for Newcastle, I think they would want to have as much spending freedom as possible. And quite right. I mean, you know, it's it's. I don't see any reason why not. I think they, they're really on the verge. Another exciting team that can really push on and uh, they will want as much freedom as possible. Now, for them next season, as I mentioned, without a European campaign, I think that could play into their hands. And so they could be strong performers in the league next season. And that's the sort of club that Villa are going to have to be looking over their shoulders at, as well as the Spurs. If Man United do somehow, with a miracle, get things stabilised, they could be pushing in. Chelsea, we expect to go forward, even though there's still unsettlement at Chelsea. Who knows? Uh, but I'm looking forward to our episode when we do our predictions for next season. And uh, <laughs> I'll give you exactly the places that the table is going to finish. Fantastic. Well, Keith, before that, before we get to that point, I mean, we, as you kind of mentioned there, we know they're not going to be in Europe for next year. And we've discussed potentially their aims over the next few seasons. So if this vote is to happen, how long do you think the club are going to give themselves to become a European giant? Do you think it's a, is it a five-year plan? Will it be 10-year? Could it even be shorter than that? Could it be a one to two-year plan that they expect to be back in Europe and competing at the highest level really soon? No, it's got to be a one, two year plan. The pressure's always there for them right now. And I think they will want to be in that top four next year. That's that's a key part for them. Uh, and certainly a five year plan means being consistent performers in Europe uh, in one way or another. And that will be expected. Uh, they want to see growth and they want to see opportunities. And, you know, the owners there are first of success. They, they, they'll give it time and you know they'll, under, they'll be patient to, to a degree but they urgently want that global recognition uh, and to be seen as good owners. And I think that's important. Uh, and also they'll want to have that rub off on the Saudi Premier League as well. Uh, and that uh, they're seen as good owners that way. So, yes, the pressure will be on. Eddie Howe knows it and uh, the board there know it. And uh, it's got to happen. Otherwise, who knows who could end up in Chop Chop Square. <laughs> do you feel, Keith, that this season that's just passed, actually, they regressed from where they were for the previous season? Or actually, given the injuries and some of the struggles they had with their squad, was it understandable they didn't finish in a European spot? And actually, looking ahead for next season, how they sort of rectify some of those problems? No, I'm prepared to give them a pass due to the injuries. I think they, they were dehabilitating to a great degree. Uh, and I think they still showed signs of resilience. And uh, I was, no, overall... I think Eddie Howe had another pass for the season. He did well. And uh, no, I think the injuries were exceptional. And so they've got to be taken into account. But overall, a good season. Mm. And it sounds like they're still confident, Keith, in signing defender Lloyd Kelly after missing out on Tosin Adaraboya, who's going to Chelsea. Would Do you think he would be a good addition to the squad? And actually, which other positions do they need to strengthen to build that top side to go and compete in Europe in seasons to come? Certainly up front, they still seem weak to me. I mean, Isaac's been good, but, you know, Callum Wilson has been hit and miss with injuries and different things as well. I think they've got to really have a couple of strikers that are, are firing. And I think a number 10 has really got a fire for them as well in terms of goals. Uh, Guimaraes obviously is a, a very strong player and does well, but I think he needs to up up his, uh, his goal rate. Uh, I think they've looked a little bit pedestrian at the back and uh, perhaps a bit more speed if possible. <clears throat> but overall, I think it's still scoring goals, I think is going to be the key thing for them. Uh, and and uh, at the back, potentially some of the, the full backs, I think you know, Kieran Trippier might well be gone. Uh, and so they've got to, you know, I think, try and get the age of the squad down as low, lower as possible. And are we then expecting, if say if Trippier was to leave, Keith, are we expecting some really big signings, which I think they'll be quite shrewd, quite clever, going into next season, looking to land a European spot potentially? I think that um, Ashworth um, has gone, obviously, and I think the new group coming in will look at the age of the squad depth, and that's the main thing I think they'll be looking at. I think they need to be looking at buying young, really you know, talented fullbacks for the, the future, and that's where I think they'll focus, and that's uh, rather than any big names with experience. I think Trippier did a great job coming in, uh, obviously lending his experience, but now is the time to start growing and building for the future of them as well and really buying in some really young talent, at, you know, even at 22, 23 years old. 
And you mentioned Bruno Guimaraes in there. Do you still feel, Keith, there could be some outgoings and some top stars leaving Newcastle? Or actually, do you think maybe similar to, to Everton in that perspective, there might only be one or two top names that go and they try and keep hold of as many as they can? I think they will try and keep hold of as many as they can. I think they still want that stability, which I think they need for another season. I think next year may be a bit more re rebuilding rather than this season. So I think that's where they will try and focus. Uh, however, you know, with that European football, some of those big names may want to be away, but there is this magical pull of Tyneside. The players love it up there. Um, and, you know, they enjoy the fans and the whole social atmosphere. So it's very hard to leave as a club. But, of course, we all know that, um, you know, money talks and some of those players will be offered Champions League football like Guimara's. But I think overall, I've got a feeling they're going to stay for next season. Next season will be the one that they have to rebuild, as I say, with younger players and some new blood coming through. But rebuilding should be done gradually when possible. And I'm sure they've got the plans in place to try and do that. And key to kind of wrap up on them with Champions League football and some of their aims, you've mentioned about looking at a striker potentially. Do you feel that then they need to go sort of all out for a top number nine, like an addition to Isaac? Or actually, is it worth them signing what you might refer to as a rotation striker that can step in when he's not fit and available? Where should they go from that perspective particularly? Well, you know, we talked about Dominic Calvert-Lewin coming from Everton. I thought he would have actually been a perfect uh, Newcastle number nine Although I don't want him to go from Everton, I still think he would be perfect in that role. And I think he would play very well with Isaac uh, if they had to play two up front. But uh, I think they're going to have to go for another high quality striker up front. And I think that's where I think they would be looking, if anything, to invest some money in there.